In this video, I am going to show you how I go about introducing the question como estas and how to respond to that, but in kindergarten. Now here's the thing, some teachers, and myself included when I was a new teacher, jump right into it and present the question como estas and how to respond to it. You're going too fast. You've got to slow down. You have got to build the framework around this topic. This is what we have to do a lot in kindergarten, is you have to build the frame to support the bigger picture. To get started, you're going to tell the students that today in Spanish, we're gonna to learn to talk about our feelings. Then you pose the question, what are some feelings that we might have? What are some feelings? And you have students raise their hand and tell you feelings, and you write them down. Now, a student might raise their hand and say, feeling sad and happy. Oh, that's very good. Sad and happy. What are some other feelings we might have? Someone might say, feeling mad. Oh, feeling mad. I have all of our bad feelings in rojo, and I have all of our good feelings in azul. You know what? There's a Spanish word for feeling bad. And that word is mal. And you circle it to separate it from the rest. And there is a Spanish word for feeling good or feeling well. That is bien, bien, feeling good, bien. What are some um, things that can make you feel mal? Now we're getting into specific situations. So a student might say, oh, somebody doesn't want to play with me. Oh yeah, that's feeling mal when someone doesn't want to play with you. It makes you feel lonely, right? The word is lonely. This is a healthy activity for young students too because they are learning to name their feelings. Um, someone might say, when you get to eat candy, oh yes, feeling bien. So you're gonna get some interesting responses, but we are building the framework now. So, everyone say mal. And when you say mal, you've got to show me mal. Make a sad face, an angry face, a sick face, a scared face. All right? Everyone say mal. Now, everyone say bien. Show me a happy face or excited. All right. Um, all right, again, mal. Thumbs down. Say mal. And then, bien, thumbs up. So you can repeat it a few times like this. And then, we're going to look at some bien and mal faces. So I'll project in the classroom um, some different faces that I put in a Google slide presentation. I'll have pictures of different characters. So you show the picture, and don't expect them at this point to be able to say bien and mal on their own. You show the picture, and then you prompt them. You say, hmm. Is this character feeling bien or mal? And then they call out the answer. And then you do this. I do it for about 10 or so pictures. And you can throw in a picture of yourself at the end because it's funny. Okay. <laughs> so there we have that. Then you pass out a blank piece of paper. It's time to get them more involved. And we're going to want the paper to be horizontal. If you have a portable whiteboard, you can show them the whiteboard and you can say, okay, this is like my paper. It's the same shape as your paper, right? And I'm going to put my paper this way, the long way. Can you do that? And I am going to, and now here's where you're going to spiral back to colors and review colors a little bit. You're going to say, I want you to pick out one of your crayons that is rojo. And you're going to write here at the bottom of your paper. We're not going to keep up, take up all the space because we're going to draw a picture. But down here, we're going to write mal, M-A-L, mal. And then up here, I want you to draw a picture of a mal face. So you can draw a face that is sad or angry or looks sick. Draw a picture of something, someone that is mal. So I'll draw my picture of somebody that is mal. At this point, it wouldn't be uncommon to have a student that tells you they don't know how to write letters. They might not express it in that way, 
But if a student doesn't know how to write letters, it is okay for you to take some of your Spanish class time to go over writing letters because the alphabet that you use in Spanish is the same alphabet you use in English, except Enye. So it is helping them with their Spanish skills to be able to produce the alphabet letters themselves. All right. You give them a moment to draw their picture, and then you tell them to flip it over to the other side. Now, on the other side, we are going to use the color azul. All right. And here, okay, if we wrote mal on the other side, what do you think we're going to write on this side? And some kids might say, bien. That's right. We are going to put bien. And then we're going to draw a face here that looks bien. It could be someone that's excited or happy. You draw a face that is bien. Now some kids are going to fly through this. You can tell them if, they've, if they're finished and you're waiting for other students. You can just tell them to add some details. Then once you think you've given everyone enough time, I'd say no more than five minutes, then it's time for the students to show you what they have. So as the teacher, you say, all right, everybody show me the side of your paper that is bien. They hold it up. Show me the side of your paper that is mal. They hold it up. And then... You can go into this activity where you say one of the emotion words from their list and they show you if it's either a bien emotion or a mal emotion. So I might say, show me which side of your paper you would use for somebody that is feeling frustrated. Now we can introduce the question of como estas. Preface it by tying it back into como te llamas. You can say, okay, this question that I'm going to teach you is not the same as como te amas. What's como te amas? And they say, what's your name? Yes, no, it's not como te amas, but it sounds similar. It's como estas. And como estas means how are you? So when I ask you como estas, you can say bien or mal, just like you have on your paper. Hola. Um, Tina, como estas? Oh, Tina looks mal. I think because maybe she's sad. I'm sorry. Let's try another one. Oh, hey, Tina. Como estas? Bien. Oh, she's looking bien. Looks like she's laughing. She's having a good time. Uh-oh. Tina, como estas? Mal. She does look mal. Looks like she's kind of scared. And so then you practice with the students. I like to toss around my hedgehog, Piro, and I ask them, como estas? And I tell them, you can tell me bien, or you can tell me mal. You can pretend. If you pretend, you've got to show me what, that you understand what you're saying. So if you are mal, I need you to show me a sad face or mad face. Or look sick. If you say bien, you've got to smile because you're feeling bien. All right? And so then we practice with tossing around Piro and asking the question. And this here is pretty much your formative assessment. You can have a checklist where you can see students that get this or students that don't get this. And so there is no need to print out something for this. You have already done some formative assessment in class when you put up the pictures on the screen and you're asking is this face bien or mal um, they were showing you that they understood bien and mal when they were illustrating it on the two sides of the paper but now you can really if you need to collect the data and that's it easy you're done with the introduction building the frame so the next class you really focus more on como estas and you can introduce estoy before saying bien or mal. And then you can introduce more expressions to answer como estas. Then you want to make it so that the kids, the students, can ask como estas to each other and get response. But you see, you've got to build this piece by piece when you're teaching elementary. I also um, use my como estas music video. 
um, for this topping, and I introduce it on the very first lesson, this one that I just described. So you can see that on my YouTube channel. But I hope you find this video useful and have fun.